Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ. Bless all praise to the Most High. In the name of the Son, His Word, Jesus the Christ, I am back at it again to talk about what everybody's been talking about for some reason. Uh, the Little Mermaid. You know, Edomites been hating that, you know, they cast a black girl and uh, black people been loving it. But uh, what what's the truth behind all this? What, what does God think about all this? Uh, I'm just going to be frank with you. BS. We're going to get into this article. It's talking about a, def uh, a definitive rebuttal to every racist Little Mermaid argument. And of course, this is uh, your friend and mine, the uh, Edomite woman, the white woman. It's, let's skim through this article and let's get to it. Ever since Disney released the first look for its 2023 live-action remake of The Little Mermaid, the internet has been sodden with wave after wave of racist critics complaining that Ariel, the completely fictional underwater fish woman, keep this in mind. It's a completely fictional underwater fish woman. So really, nobody should care on either side about it. But we're going to get into that. Shouldn't be black. That's what they say. That's what these uh, racist Edomites, they making all memes and all sorts of stuff that I've seen. I've seen crazy stuff about this. But uh, hashtags like, not my Ariel. <laughs> Just like they used to be on the other side, not my president, now they say not my Ariel, are bouncing around social media and YouTube, hid the dislike counter, okay, no, and YouTube hid the dislike counter on the official video after it was bombarded with racist comments more than 1.5 million dislikes, yeah, so, they didn't take away the dislike button, but they made it to where you could not see dislikes, only the person who made the video could see the dislikes. But people have their different apps and things like that that they download and their different websites that actually tell you how many dislikes on a video. And it's oh, apparently it's over one and a half million. Uh, one group of critics went as far to share a digitally altered version of the teaser that featured a white woman in place of the movie star Halle Berry. No, that's <laughs> it's not Halle Berry. It's Halle Bailey, who they called a woke actress, right? So whenever they said, uh, oh, they, they cast a woke actress, they just mean black. That's all they mean. Alright, so here are some of the uh, claims. The Little Mermaid is a Danish story, therefore Ariel should be white. And they go into, well, you know, the original Little Mermaid animated movie deviated from the uh, the old folklore that uh, Hans Christian Andersen made up. Like, it deviated from that. And there's another claim they make. Mermaids live under the sea and therefore would not have dark skin. Uh, even though mermaids just aren't real at all. It's an imaginary fish creature. Matt Walsh, who is a, you know, a Nazi Edomite, said that on one of his videos. Um, here we go. This is what I wanted to get to, though. Mermaids are a European mythological figure, and therefore Ariel should be white. All right. Numerous titter numerous Twitter scraps have cropped up with people trying to argue European folklore or even Homerian epics like the Odyssey that is a Greek story have some sort of monopoly on the idea of mermaids in reality it's fascinating to see how many different cultures throughout history have arrived at parallel folklorical themes humanoid creatures that dwell in the water are part of innumerable mythologies around the world right so it's mythology right that's what mermaids are. Mermaids are based on, and they can try to, uh, you know, bounce around the fact, but the fact is that mermaids are based on Greek myths. The mermaids that we know today in American culture are based on Greek myths, just like a lot of American culture is based on Greek culture and Roman culture, all right? But uh, it, it outlines, like, uh, some of these other uh, cultures that have these uh, mytho uh, mythological um, pagan entities. East Asian and Oceanic folklore is replete with stories of underwater kingdoms and mer people, both good and evil, from the Majindara and some Philippine regions to the tale of the Indian princess, uh, I ain't gonna try to pronounce that, Sir, Sir Ratna or Huang Ok, Huang Ok. That reached South Korea. Middle Eastern folk tales compiled in the classic Arabian Nights collection, which date back more than a thousand years, feature several accounts of sea dwelling human creatures in parts of continental Africa and among the African diaspora. Folklore describing water spirits, often in the shape of beautiful women, are common. According to uh, 
Shona mythology in Zimbabwe, the Njuzu are mermaids who occupy lakes or rivers. Also, not all Europeans are white. Also, Little Mermaid isn't real. So, what I wanted to point out is that all of this is pagan culture. It's pagan deities. And specifically in the Little Mermaid, they have, a, I think her dad's name is Triton, which is a Greek god. That's what Disney is trying to push on you. It's trying to push on you this uh, specifically Greek mythology. All right, that's what they want your mind at. They don't want to own the laws of God. Right. So here's a video that I'm going to show you real quick. Check this out. Right, and look who uploaded this, CNN Business. CNN Business is the one who made this video. Because they say, oh, this is great business right here. This is a great business move. Right? Disney made a movie called Black Panther that made over a billion dollars. And they said, wow, that black dollar is strong. We got to get more of that. How can we get more of that? Oh, yeah, I know. Black Ariel. Because you look into the casting of the movie. I think it might even said it here in this article. Look into the casting of this movie and when it happened. Black Panther movie come out. Uh, no, it's not in this article. But if you look into it, the casting of this movie happened in 2019. The year after Black Panther made a billion dollars. This is all a business move. This is all a cynical money making move. Alright. That's all this is. That's all this is. All right. So, you may look at this video and like, oh, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with uh little black girls being happy about the Little Mermaid? What's wrong with that? We, as a people, meaning black, Latino, American, Indian people, the Israelites, we are so brainwashed and brain dead that we get so excited and so happy over crumbs. Here Esau is eating this big sandwich right he's eating a foot long from subway here are little crumbs fall off the sandwich he said oh thank you so much thank you so much you made ariel black where is the black jesus movie where is the black paul movie the black judith movie the black susanna movie the black hadessa movie the black deborah movie the black daniel movie the black david movie where are these movies at that we can actually watch and enjoy and actually see true representation. But no, we get a fish creature. And now we all happy. I've seen grown people. Grown women. Excited about this movie. Like it means something. This is Greek mythology. Trying to brainwash you. Crumbs. And you're happy about it. So I'm going to get this uh, parable real quick. Jesus Christ spoke a parable. I ain't even got it pulled up. But Jesus Christ spoke a parable in Luke 16. And we better get into it. The book of Luke 16. I'm going to start with 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid at his gate full of sores. Right, so I'm not going to get into the full breakdown of this, but understand Lazarus is representative of Israel. Same way Lazarus, the man, was brought back from the death by Christ. Same way Israel is being brought back from the dead, if you read Ezekiel 37. 
and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, right? The rich man is America. We just want crumbs. That's all we want. All we want is crumbs. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, right? So the dogs will come, as in the heathen, will come and then eh, give us a little bit. They'll give us a little bit. We want some crumbs. He said, we won't necessarily even give you the crumbs. We'll, we'll lick your sores, though. But we are happy with the crumbs. We should be wanting the whole world. It is rightfully ours. We are the inheritors of the world. But we happy with the crumbs. Meanwhile, there's the same country that give you the same uh, company, excuse me, that give you Song of the South. If you ain't never heard of Song of the South, we about to get into it. Song of the South is a 1946 American live-action animated, live-action slash animated musical drama film directed by Harv Foster and Wilfred Jackson, produced by Walt Disney, and released by RKO Radio Pictures. It is based on the Uncle Remus stories, Uncle Remus as adapted by Joel Chandler Harris and stars James Baskett as Uncle Remus in his final film role. The film takes place in Georgia during the Reconstruction Era, a period of American history after the American Civil War and the abolition of slavery. The story follows a seven-year-old Johnny who is visiting his grandmother's plantation for an extended stay. Johnny befriends Uncle Remus, an elderly worker on the plantation, and takes joy in hearing his tales about the adventures of Briar Rabbit, Briar Fox, Briar Bear. Johnny learns from the stories how to cope with the challenges he has experienced while living on the plantation, right? So, this is uh, based in a time where slavery has just ended, but sharecropping is at its height, right? And you have Uncle Remus, who is essentially Uncle Tom, and he is on this plantation working, and he makes it seem like he's just so happy to be a slave. And you'll notice that a lot about uh american movies a lot of times it was only recently they started to depict slavery as it was a lot of american movies depict the slavery as like oh well everybody just got along and you know black people have to be concerned be a uh, subservient that's what this movie was song of the south i'm gonna jump down to this uh paragraph right here the third paragraph since its initial release, the film has attracted controversy, with critics characterizing its portrayal of African Americans and plantation life as racist. Everybody knows it's racist. As a result of the film's controversial legacy, Disney has not released Song of the South on any home video format in the United States. And the film has never been made available on its streaming platform, Disney+. Plus. Yeah, they don't want to show that side of Disney. Like the, uh, like the crows in Dumbo. They don't want to show that. Some of the musical and animated sequences have been released through other means, and the full film has seen home video distribution in other countries. See, they just don't want to distribute it uh, to black people in America. But they'll send it around to everybody else all over the world. The cartoon characters from the film continue to appear in a variety of books, comics, and other Disney media for many decades after the film's release. Disney's theme park ride Splash Mountain! First opened in 1989, is based on the film's animated sequences. So Splash Mountain is a reminder to you of Song of the South. Disney made the movie Song of the South. They said, well, this is too overt. We can't put that in Disney World, but we'll put Splash Mountain there instead. Now what does everybody say about Splash Mountain? They love it. They love Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is a reminder of your servitude, of your bondage, of your captivity. That's what Splash Mountain is. All right. So let's go to the scriptures. Uh, I'm going to start with Hosea 3 and 4. Because this is why we we like the the black Ariel, right? This is why uh, we want those kind of crumbs. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image. So we don't have an image of what we're supposed to be. We don't have an image of our black Jesus Christ. We don't have an image of our black King David. We don't have an image of black Judith. Man, that would be a great movie that uplift black women 
to show them they can do whatever they set their mind to if they keep the commandments of God, that they can save their people and by extension the world. And without an ephod and without teraphim, teraphim means many images, afterward, meaning after this time period, shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, keep the commandments, and David their king, or rather Jesus Christ who sat on the throne of David, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. See, this is an end time prophecy. In the latter days, we're going to return to the Lord and we're going to return to our natural images. But for right now, we just got the Little Mermaid, that uh, fictional fish creature, as if that means something. Revelation 12 and verse 17. And the dragon, the dragon is America, was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's what this is. It's a psychological war. The crumbs. That's what this is. This is the crumbs. Will lick the sores. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's a distraction from keeping the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. That's what it is. And of course the motivation behind this, as I brought up the Black Panther movie, made a billion dollars. It's very possible that this uh, Little Mermaid movie is going to do the same and make billions of dollars. Very possible. This is uh, the book of... 1 Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. That's Walt Disney. That's the Disney company. The Disney Corporation. Which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It's going to be their downfall. Their love of money. Their pride. is going to be their downfall. Alright. So with that I'm going to close it out with this scripture right here. Be not deceived. Be not deceived by this Greek mythology they're trying to push on you. By this pandering that they're doing to you. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now, am I saying if you go see the Little Mermaid movie, then you're going to die? No, I'm not saying that. But you being a Disney adult and focusing your life around what they give you, the crumbs that they give you, that will be the death of you. You're going to be living your life like Disney wants you to live it as opposed to how God wants you to live it. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Don't break any of God's laws. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Alright. So. Uh, like what they say. Stay woke. Awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. Alright. With that. I hope y'all learned something. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless.